Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail. Today we're going to be looking at a game called Game Dev Tycoon, the game where you get to make games and create your own game development studio. Some people say, hey, that sounds just like Game Dev Story, and you're right. Did you know that there's such a thing as games in the same genre or same idea, such as Diablo or Torchlight or Path of Exile? This is a game that is similar in a lot of ways to a game that is based off of or inspired by, but it really ups the ante. It adds a lot of features and is far more challenging than Game Dev Story, which are all things that I welcome, and I just want to give you all a look or a taste at what this game entails. So without further ado, we're going to start from the beginning, where you get to start in your basement, which, hey, is, if it were in my basement in my house, I would not even have room for wiring our computer because it's just a crawl space. But we're just, oh, well fail self and we're just going to call ourselves how about good kitty there we go we're the internet though so you have to put eh at the end so i'll give myself a nice striped sweater did i just yeah i did select the mail option doesn't really matter though so in game dev story you start off in your basement and what you get to do is develop a game so we're going to pick we don't have too many options here to start with but we're going to start with, let's do a space game. And what kind of game is it going to be? It's going to be a space action game. On We have two options here, the equivalent of the Commodore 64 or the PC. And since the PC is way cheaper to develop for, and I start with $70,000, I'd love to have $70,000 right now. That's what we'll do. So we're just going to call this a space action game. It makes me think in a way of like Commander Keen or something, but I'm just going to call this Starfall. Why not? You'll see that I'm not as creative as other people maybe with game names, but I'm not too huge on doing iterative names either. But if y'all have any ideas for game genres, game anything, I'm up for throwing whatever up on the interweb, even to see how it does, even if it sounds like the most crappy idea, because it is. I, I am happy to take suggestions. So Starfall, the space action game, what you do is you get little blobs here. Once again, it does feel a lot like Game Dev Story in that you have little blobs that will pop up and add points to your game. What differentiates it in part is that you have this development stage. It's where you get to add in all kinds of stuff. You get to focus different parts of your game. For instance, if I wanted to bump up the story, i do that. And that focuses more on the story. For this, with a space and an action game, and me starting out, I'm going to focus more on the engine. I kind of want to do some stuff with gameplay, so we'll do it like that. Story, doesn't matter. Technically, this game starts in the 80s, and back then, you're lucky if you had a screen that said, oh, story. I could have actually made this a uh, text-based game if I wanted to, but we'll do that. I'm going to scratch my head first, because danger if you're working in your basement. I guess the screwdrivers are there for some things. But, just starting off, I've already burned through a bunch of cash, so that sounds like a winner there. So you have to think about this as well. There's multiple stages. You have to make some choices. And dialogues will do the take off every zig kind of thing. Now, let's see here. In order to have a good game, I like level design and I like artificial intelligence. <laughs> What's going to be more important here? Probably, I'm just going to leave them the same there. They're both important. They're both, they're both important parts of the action puzzle. So we'll add to that. And you have different elements here, design and technology, and some fall in one, some fall in the other. I haven't quite figured out. Apparently, I've read that graphics fall under technology instead of design, which confuses me a little bit, but I'll just have to take it here. So we do want high graphics, world design, doesn't matter. Sound probably doesn't matter too much. But yeah, graphics, we want the coolest looking bit of blocky 2D graphics version one that we can get. And notice that I've burned through about $36,000 just to try and make a game from my basement. I thought working from the basement was supposed to get your overhead down and you want to wait until all the bugs are out before you release it. And you can sit here and try and let these bubbles pop, but see if you sit for too long. You could add more bugs, you could go bankrupt. So there we go, new topic, new combo, great combo. And here's another thing that you don't get so much of from game 
death story that you do get in Tycoon is that you get a lot of different kinds of experience to gain, and it's shown right here, right in front of you. So I gain levels, the games gain levels, and we're just going to release it and see how we do. This is me working in my basement, my life savings, savings is being squandered away, I can't even drive my car to the grocery store. Starfall. Starfall, isn't that a game? They're Starbound, which I'm very excited about. So seven, eight, not bad for working in my basement. Or my mother's basement, not my mother's basement. My basement, oh, did I get a ten? No. Whoa, I got an eight. Look at that. First game, and people love it. So, good kitty, a newcomer, has just released their first game, Starfall. Game received favorable reviews with such a good start, good kitty is sure to gain fans quickly. Maybe so. How many units can we sell? Thousands and thousands of games, and if only we could incorporate the shareware model from back in the day. It's like, hey, here's my disc. Now send me a mail envelope with a $15 check. We used to get 15 in the top 15. This is me from my basement. You all can suck it. The Activision with your adventure. Actually, that hasn't even been made yet. If the Atari hasn't been released. Or if the Atari isn't even in this game. Starfall is so accessible, we now have 25 fans. And this is really before the internet, so 25 fans is serious business. But only 25 fans for selling that many games? I don't know. But look, I broke even. And you can check the game history to see where your profit is. I've actually managed to make a profit from this somehow. I guess because I've been paying myself per month, so... 10,000 units. That's a good starting point. There we go. So we're staying in the top rankings. We're making gobs of cash. And let's see here. Do we want to research something? We will want to make a custom game engine eventually, but I do want to get another topic here. We could go for the ever-prevalent fantasy topic. We could go for pirate. We could go for sci-fi. There's all kinds of topics down here. I've come to learn from trying this game a few times is that they kind of get randomized or jumbled in terms of what shows up, but I'm going to go with fantasy first. So you research that. Topics you can research and use any time, but other things you research you have to incorporate into your game engine, which is what something I'll get to when we get to it. Because Starfall, new topic, fantasy, and now as you see I have oodles of cash. This has made quite a profit for me, and I could move out of my basement, but no, I'm going to keep working in it. So we get the second game. Let's go ahead and make a fantasy. Fantasy what? We could do fantasy RPG. And let's see, I have enough money that I could probably do this on the Commodore 64. I'm not going to call it the G64. It almost sounds like G4, which good riddance to that channel. So. Fantasy RPG on the Commodore 64, we're going to call this Dragtopia, which is a fun play on are we talking about dragons or are we talking about queens? Welcome to the United Queendom, they said. Can you say that? Yes, you can. So, Fantasy RPG, what matters here? Story is going to matter a lot more. I don't think the end is going to matter too much. I almost could do this a text based thing, maybe, but we're going to. I'm going to stick to it like this, because I want the bestest story around, which back in year one, month seven of when this game era is, the best story around is you get a screen of text instead of a bunch of text. So, Dragtopia. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that name at all. Once again, you're going to want a lot of dialogue, I imagine. Or at least, I actually have done a pretty bang-up job of making fantasy RPGs in my last playthrough, and this is kind of how I did it of just medium level design, high focus on dialogue, low focus on artificial intelligence, and this gets more complicated as you get more team members, but working in the base right now it's pretty easy. So there we go, the uh, Govador, not Commodore, Sell out, selling the PC. You'll notice you get little news bits like this, and people say, hey, it's just like Game Dev Story. It's true, because it tries to follow along the sort of history of gaming, or at least American gaming. So there we go. This might end of competing hardware manufacturers, as if, yeah, Commodore 64 is a good system, but Starfall sold almost 20,000 units and made me a ton of money. 
So that is pleasant, and I have over a hundred fans now. So let's see here. I have, I can do basic sounds and 2D graphics. It's almost like King's Quest, where you just have to hunt the pixel, and the pixel is like, what is this blob? I don't know. Is that a shark, or is that a shrub, or is that an alligator? But this is kind of what I've done for the uh, fantasy RPG thing. Successful. There's guides online. There's some interesting data mining going on now. The game's been out for a little bit, but for now, let's just kill these bugs and see if I can make something good. Okay, so you can actually let this keep going and see if more pips will come up, but once again, I'm eating my money. I think I already made that point. As soon as I click finish, there's going to be a bug. Oh, no. So, new record. New combo, great combo, I imagine, and TJ combo from Killer Instinct, for some reason, popped in my head. So, just click through all these, I get more experience. I'm still level 1, but you get good multipliers, and you can get a lot of multipliers for a new top of your combo. Great combo, and then some other things like matching trends that'll come up and what people want in games and having good team management. But the important thing is, are my reviews going to suck? No, I don't think they are. No, I'm apparently a hit maker so far. Well, maybe. It's just they keep flashing that 10. So overall, I'm doing... I'm doing good. So this is like a 7.8, 7.9, 7.75. There we go. It cost me 54,000 to make. That cost me 39,000 to make, but it's on the Commodore 64. So can we get something? And then Nintendo starts to come in. Now they don't go over the whole, hey, the game industry crashed, but I guess that's because they don't want people to be butthurt about, oh, my games aren't going to sell. They're going to end up in a dumpster. So what will Nintendo deliver? I don't know. Had people heard of Nintendo very much back then? I know they'd heard of Donkey Kong, but I am selling hotcakes, but not as many hotcakes as last time. And then you get contract work. Once again, seems familiar, because it is familiar. And there's not too much to say about that. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to defend the company or anything one way or the other. There is a lot that is very similar. These presentation elements are very similar. I would like to see being able to look at some more data than this, but the little drop down bar there's similar. There's all kinds of things there. It says, oh, it's similar, but similar doesn't mean the exact same game. But contract work. You're going to feel right at home for some of this. You just want to be able to pick something that is actually doable in the allotted time given. And I don't think I can do any of these. Maybe 20 points in four weeks, not 24 points, not 28 points. Uh, play test. Let's try that. The reason you do contracts too is because, much like another game, you can get research. And I want research because I want to be able to make another engine here, but of course I'm scratching my fucking head instead of doing work. <sighs> That's not me in real life. So I would have gotten it in time, but I decided to have a ship break. Oh wait, did I get it? I barely got it. That was like procrastination nation right there. So, cartridge-based and uniquely designed controller. So, I can get new contracts from time to time, but for now, I want to focus on making an engine, preferably an engine with a gamepad. So, I don't know how that's going to work. Let's do a, uh, let's see, there's some other topics I can try and do, but... This game, one way that is harder than game dev story is that it really penalizes you if you do the same thing again and again. So space and action I don't want to do next. Fantasy and RPG I don't want to do next. Let's do a uh, sports simulation. There we go. We'll make it for the Commodore 64 again. And what is a good sport that needs simulating? Let's think back to the 80s and... I don't know. There are all kinds of sports that were popular in the 80s that may or may not be as popular today, but all I can think of for some reason is row, Captain. That's right, we are going to row this boat. I can make it a text-based simulation. I don't know. Uh, Dragtopia. Apparently people really like the hidden drag queen items in that game, and I have 171.8. So let's see here, to make a good simulation. Story, 
Oh no, you're rowing a boat. That's kind of a story. I guess what do I want in terms of engine or gameplay? Ah, the engine's important. I think the gameplay is just going to be a little more important. And you can, like, if you, just so you know, it doesn't really matter. This is all about ratios here. So if you do all max, it's not like you're doing more versus less. This is just the ratio. So I'm going to do some engine, a little more gameplay. But overall, way more than story and quest. And we'll see how that goes. Right now I've introduced a lot of bugs. Good job. I'm going to sit there and pick my nose real quick, so... Dialogues, row, row, that's all you need. AI, though, in simulation and in sports is huge, so we're actually going to drop the level design a little bit. <sighs> so, monthly cost, $8,000 more. Dollars. I hate paying myself $8,000 per month. What am I, like, eating Funyuns from hell and destroying my septic tank or something? I don't know. So, there we go. We want good graphics. Even back in the 80s, people were like, oh my god, graphics were everything. And it's not just the blast processing that people talk about with Sega. It was even before then, people were drooling over what you could do with your 4-bit computers and stuff. So, I don't know if Rogue Captain is going to be a very good game, but damn it, we're going to try. As long as I make a profit, I guess. Because right now my my buttons aren't doing so hot up here. But I can afford to tank it just a little bit, but I do need to make some cash. So no records, new topic, new combo. Great combo. Alright, so apparently we like boating, and I'm going to get up to level 2 for some things. Alright, so graphics are level 2. Let's release this game. I feel like I'm not going to do as good with the critics as this. Well, maybe. Maybe. Nice experience. They apparently always wanted to be on a boat team because they get all the chicks. Oh, there we go. Five. Four. Oh, five. From Game Hero. Yo, oh, come on. There we go. Focus on graphics, serve the game well. Because, yeah, you want to look at those rippled pixelated chests. So who wants to buy this? Go on Reddit at Should I Buy This Game and ask. So I am cutting into my own profit a little bit here by jumping with the Commodore 64. Let's see here. Row Captain. Row Captain. Sell me something. So far this is probably going to be my worst selling game. Let's see here. 7.3. I sold 16. And wow, I actually sold better on the PC, even though it has less market share, so maybe I'll get away from the Commodore 64. I don't know if I have enough capital to go for the Nintendo or not. I'll see what the license looks like. So let's see here. It's kind of funny because one of the things that you can do with your game is actually Oh, let's see here. Oh my god, that is a huge... No, it's not too huge of a def cost, but that is a pretty steep license fee. So I think we're going to make another thing on the PC. And we're going to make a... Uh, make a medieval... Like medieval strategy game. That sounds like a PC game. We're going to do that because it has cheaper dev cost, and we're going to call it. I don't know, I really liked games like Lords of the Realm and stuff, or just gonna call this Feudal Squabble. Because, uh, war, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing, even in the 1200s. And we're just gonna start development. I could try and do this on the cheap with text-based graphics, uh, but we're just gonna see if we can field a profit for now. Have I made a profit with Row Captain? Yes, I've made $38,000, which would be great if I could do that all the time, but considering where I started versus where I'm at, I'm at over 200000 That's not terrible. I gained six fans. I have some big fans of rowing, apparently. So, strategy game. Let's see here. I think of, like, StarCraft and stuff for a lot of the strategy, and I'm not sure exactly if that's what people are talking about, but Oh no, the engine's kind of important. Gameplay is going to kind of trump there. 
I guess for the strategy, I gotta think back. It's kind of like more of a reason thing where they had all the cutscenes and stuff. I'll put a little more story in there, but I think it's not going to be. A, well, I'm looking those bars down there. Probably want a two to one ratio for that, and then the rest here. I don't know how to get that to work, so we'll just call it that. So we want to focus on gameplay the most. Because I'm thinking like old Warcraft orcs and humans, which is not at all like the '80s strategy stuff, but. We're not all story cutscenes like we are today, so. And there's a little girl starting to cry. So hopefully she's okay. Been sick the past few days, so she been wanting to look at this game a little bit soon, but I haven't had a chance to. Yeah. I'll have to take care I'll have to pause and take care of that in just a second, but let's see here. Okay, where was I? Level design. So kind of the same thing. It's kind of like a simulation in a way. But I guess the AI is important, but maybe not as important. I'll do like that. That looks pretty decent. Dialogues, a little bit more. AI is still present, but level design is kind of the big shebang. So, ooh, row captain somehow got a spurt. Maybe it's rowing season. I don't know. But once again, basic sounds and 2D graphics. What do I want here? Probably just something along the lines of... I don't know, that looks pretty solid. I want a little more wall design. Maybe a little less sound, but... Graphics... People just seem to be graphics whores. Very much. Hi, I'm Caroline Richards of Local News. I've heard rumors that you're already working on your next game. Love to interview about it. Yes, I would love an interview for my next game. And they're going to say, oh, it sucks. It sucks. So bad. Good kitty. Local startup is trying to make it big in the gaming industry. The company's already published their games and working hard on their next one. Found a way to fill itself as the next game. Medieval strategy game something the company has not done before. It's great to see small local companies exciting new industries. Yeah, it's an exciting new industry. Good luck, good kitty. And I get eight hype. Sweet. Hype is good because that helps your game sell. Doesn't really help with reviews, but... Gotta get money in the bank, and reviews only go so far with that. So, Row Captain, now off the market. I cannot believe I made $100,000 off of oh, roaming. But let's see. Just gotta get these bugs out. Once again, spend $8,000 on nachos, apparently. And there we go. New combo, new everything. Great combo. So. Go ahead, world design. So even though I didn't focus on stories and quest or world design, I apparently still leveled them up. So you get some experience for them. It seems to be weighted somewhat by what kind of game you're doing, but not a ton on what you focus. Like my graphics went up quite a bit because I focused on graphics. My world design not as much, but with the multipliers it helps. So let's release this game. I want to see the reviews, and then I'm probably going to put a stop to this for now. So feudal squabble. Please be something good. Oh, damn. There we go. Nine. Seven. So apparently I've confused them because they just split their opinion. So there we go. Star Games, I love you. Informed Gamer, get the fuck out and go bankrupt. Can't wait for the sequel. I already call for sequels, and this is not an era where sequels or games are really coming in. So let's see. Feudal Squabble is going to sell a... Sales rank 14, not bad. So I'm going to stop that here for now, and we're going to pick this up next time, and we are going to work on creating a custom game engine. So we will start there when this picks up. So until next time, I would, just if you want my final word, I do recommend you pick this game up. Maybe the $8 price point might be too steep for you for this kind of game, but it's a worthwhile play. It sucks you on. It builds a lot, and I'm going to probably stick with this and make a few more videos just so you can see how the game builds up. So if you want to just watch this, take a look. There's plenty of other people streaming, talking about it. But yeah, it gets my recommendation, whatever that means to you. So stick around.